Well, hey everybody, it's Friday yet again, and time for our normal routine, so let's get right to it. First of all, we have some mail, and it is from an American gentleman, but it's from England. And the reason being that Harley, the fellow who sent this to me, is a, an American serviceman who is stationed in England. So that's why, and it says, uh, just watched your... Yeah, El Capone video and your mail call shout out to Palm Z. Thought I would send you a sticker for your bucket and board. They are my first attempt at stickers and likely to change. But when that happens, I'll just have to send some more. Love your channel and content. Have a great day. MD and T Harley. So MD and T Harley. If you haven't watched his channel, it's great. He's a metal detector. Goes out with different people in, in different areas of England. And uh, Harley, thank you for your service to your country and to those of us in the free world that uh, enjoy our freedoms because of efforts of yourself and other servicemen. But uh, be sure to check out his channel. It's uh, MD and T Harley. So I'll get these up on the board. I'll take a picture of it up there. Put one on my bucket too. So thank you, Harley. Appreciate that. I'll uh, I'll re reciprocate. <laughs> so be watching your mail. So that's our shout out for today. And now it's story time. How many of you ever had a coincidence in your life? Something that seems a little a little too odd to just to have happened, but yet it's a, a coincidence that uh, you take note of. Well, that's what our story is about today. And many of you may have heard this before, but uh, if you haven't, then you'll find it interesting. If you have, then bear with me and maybe it'll refresh your memory. Lincoln and Kennedy, two of the most tragic and dramatic deaths in American history are the assassinations of President Abraham Lincoln and John Fitzgerald Kennedy and involve the astonishing parallels. Number one. Lincoln was elected president in 1860. Exactly 100 years later, in 1960, Kennedy was elected president. 2. Both men were deeply involved in civil rights for the African Americans. 3. Both men were assassinated on a Friday in the presence of their wives. 4. Each wife had lost a son while living at the White House. 5. Both men were killed by a bullet that entered the head from behind. 6. Lincoln was killed in Ford's Theater. Kennedy met his death while riding in a Lincoln convertible made by the Ford Motor Company. 7. Both men were succeeded by vice presidents named Johnson who were Southern Democrats and former Senators. 8. Andrew Johnson was born in the year 1808. Lyndon Johnson was born in 1908, exactly 100 years later. 9. The first name of Lincoln's private secretary was John, and the last name of Kennedy's private secretary was Lincoln. 10. John Wilkes Booth was born in 1839, according to some sources. Lee Harvey Oswald was born in 1939, 100 years later. 11. Both assassins were Southerners who held extremist views. 12. Both assassins were murdered before they could be brought to trial. 13. Booth shot Lincoln in a theater and fled to a barn. Oswald shot Kennedy from a warehouse and fled to a theater. 14. Lincoln and Kennedy each have seven letters in their last name. 15. Andrew Johnson and Lyndon Johnson each have 13 letters in their names. 16. 
John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald each has 15 letters. In addition, the first public proposal that Lincoln be the Republican candidate for president in a letter to the Cincinnati Gazette in November 6, 1858, also endorsed a John Kennedy for vice president, John P. Kennedy, formerly Secretary of the Navy. So there you have some interesting coincidences. I'll share one more with you. This one's kind of uh, short, but nonetheless uh, kind, of, kind of interesting. If I can find it again here. This is one's called, this is documented as well. It's a true case. It's on a woodland path. Eric W. Smith, a metallurgist with the English Steel Company, lived in a quiet suburb of Sheffield. Behind his house were woods that people used to ride, used to ride horses. And in the spring and in the summer, it was Smith's habit to stroll there, enjoying the peace and quiet and collecting horse manure for his tomato plants. For this purpose, he carried with him a small trowel and an old oil sock, oil cloth shopping bag. One day in the late 1950s, he was quietly making his way along a woodland path, pausing now and then to scoop up some manure for his tomatoes. He saw a figure slowly approaching him along the path, a man whose progress was also, un uh, also interrupted by scooping up bits of horse manure. Clearly, Smith thought, here was another man who appreciated the virtues of horse manure. Midway between the two men was a bench, and reaching it simultaneously, they sat down. By a remarkable coincidence, the stranger was carrying an oilcloth bag identical to Smith's, as well as a little trowel. Both men, it turned out, had gone to the woods to collect manure for their tomatoes. With the bond now established, Smith reached for his pipe and tobacco tin. The stranger also took out a pipe, and Smith offered him a fill of tobacco. No thanks, the stranger said. I have my own brand. And he did. It was the same as Smith's. At that point, the men had the sense that something eerie was happening to them. My name is Smith, Smith said. So was mine, said the stranger. Eric Smith, said the first Smith. Me too, said the second Smith. Eric W. Smith, said the first Smith. Yes, said the second Smith. The W stands for Wales, said the number one Smith. Ah, said the number two smith, there we differ. I'm Walter. It's a pretty amazing coincidence, eh? Well, there you go. Two, two stories of coincidence or uh, interesting things. Another little tidbit on the Abraham Lincoln story you may not know is uh, not too long before Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, uh, Todd Lincoln, his son, was on a railway platform as the train was coming into the station and was bumped by somebody and began to fall in front of the approaching train, which would of course meant his doom. But a person standing next to him in the crowd was able to reach out and grab him by his frock coat and pull him safely back onto the platform. The man who saved Todd Lincoln? John Wilkes Booth's brother. So how is that for interesting coincidence? John Wilkes, John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated Abraham Lincoln, say his brother saved the life of Todd Lincoln, who was president of the Pullman Railway Car Company. So how is that for interesting? All right, now it's time for the Groaner of the Week. Well, a few years back, there was a pastor of a congregation, a little church out in the country somewhere, and uh, had a teenage son who was basically a good young lad, but you know had his little bits of rebellion in him, like most most teenagers do. And he came to his dad one day and said, "Dad, may I use the car?" And his father said, "Well, yes, but two conditions have to be met first. 
first I want your room cleaned up. It's a pigsty. And your mom's been after you for weeks to do that. So first you have to clean up your room. And second of all, your hair is an absolute mess. I want you to get a haircut. This is far too long. Well, the boy doesn't say anything, and off he goes. And the next day he comes to his dad and says, Dad, can I use the car? And his dad said, well, I told you yes, but you had to meet those two conditions. You have to clean up your room and get a haircut. Well, Dad, I cleaned up my room, he said. So the father says, let's take a look. So up to the boy's room they go, and my goodness, the room's been dusted and vacuumed. The dad looks under the bed, and he looks in the drawers and looks in the closet to make sure it wasn't one of those you know, hide it out of sight type cleanups. But no, everything has been picked up and put away where it belongs, and under the bed doesn't even have any dust monies. The boy has done an amazing job of cleaning up his room. And he says, well, what do you think, Dad? And his father says, well, son, I'm absolutely amazed. This room is spotless, and everything is organized and where it belongs, and you did a fantastic job. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Can I use the car? Well, son, I said you had to meet two conditions. Clean up your room, which you've done, and I'm very proud of you, and get a haircut. You still need to do the latter. Well, you know, Dad, I've been thinking. Jesus had long hair, and he's the one we worship, part of the triune God. You preach about him every Sunday. And he had long hair. His father sat down on the bed and well, son, you know, you've got a point. Jesus did have long hair. Actually, probably longer than yours. That's a good point. Jesus had long hair. But there's another point you're forgetting, son. He walked everywhere he went. Oh. <laughs> so I have a feeling somebody made a trip to the barber shop before too long so they could drive the car. All right, well, I hope you've, re you've enjoyed today's uh, shout-out story and groaner, and will join me on Tuesday. I'm hoping this Tuesday I'll feel up to doing some cooking and get it up there. Um, having good days and bad days, just uh, part, of my, part of my condition, unfortunately, but uh, we'll hopefully get something up for Tuesday. So have a fantastic weekend. Take care, stay safe, and God bless.